Hey everyone, I hope you're having a fun time today and you're enjoying all these projects that you're seeing. There's some really great tips and tricks and I'm enjoying catching little things here and there that maybe I didn't know prior to watching all these videos. They're great. Um, so a little bit about me. I am Dr. Stacy or Stacy Perry with drstacypaints.com um, and Dr. Stacy's Paint Therapy. So I have been a retailer for Amy Howard for several years enjoy the project products and I think they work seamlessly together so I love doing these little projects with them um you can find me on my social at all thing at uh, all my social media at Dr. Stacy Paints or you can find me on my website at drstacypaints.com so hopefully you'll join me there in the future but right now what we're going to do is we're going to do a project and this project is going to include making a really cute book stack. I'm trying to get them gathered up so you can see them. So these books are books that would normally probably be thrown away. Okay, look at these. Like the binding's off. I mean, it's torn up. The pages are falling out. It's just falling to pieces. These are all falling to pieces. I, I'm a big advocate of not destroying a good book or something that's valuable. Um, however, if it's something that's going to be thrown in the landfill anyway, maybe somebody doesn't want it. Um, these were all sitting in my, um, antique booth for years. Nobody bought them because they're in poor condition. So, you know, I thought, why don't we do something that I can use them every day? Why, you know, get rid of them? Why put them in a landfill? So what I decided to do with these is I'm gonna, actually going to make a book stack. It's going to be a fall book stack. It's going to be really cute. Something we can use all fall long. It won't be, you know, spooky themed. It won't be um, anything that we can't use uh, the entire fall season. I want it to be very classy and very elegant, something that, you know, will be timeless throughout the season itself and not just something we can use for a week. So um, I hope that you will stick with me here and join me. And to get started, I'm going to tilt the camera down and we can make our book stack. So what we're going to do here is we're going to repair the spine of our book. So this book, as you can see, is just really falling apart. Even the binding's starting to come apart. The pages are falling out. It's just barely attached by this little piece right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that piece that's holding just a little bit of the spine on. Once I remove that, then I'll have access uh, to being able to repair this book. And to do that, because this isn't a book stack and it's not going to be something I'm going to read daily, is I'm going to just use hot glue. So I'm going to put a line of hot glue down the middle of this book stack, or I'm sorry, this book binding on the spine. And then I'm going to really firmly press it into the pages of the book and get it well adhered. So this same process I'm going to repeat with the other books, but it's just going to give it a little structure. So this beautiful color that we're going to be using is called Almond Days. It's a really pretty ecru or off-white color. It has a little golden brown undertone. So I thought it would look nice with a fall book stack. Um, and also pick up the um, waxes we're going to be using on these very nicely later on. So I'm going to use this square brush. This one is actually from a maker studio, um, but these are also available on amyhowardathome.com. So I'm going to use the square synthetic brush with the one step paint. And as you can see, I'm just applying it directly to the top of the book. Um, beautiful thing about one step paint is it is one step. You don't have to put a primer on. You don't have to put a sealer on top of it. Just paint. It's going to have a beautiful eggshell finish when it dries. When it's wet, you'll have a little bit of sheen, as you can see here. But when it dries, it's going to be a really pretty, flat, uh, chalk-like finish. Painting this book, a little bit of the red is showing through the material. Um, and the material really soaks this paint up. So you may need to do more than one coat. Um, I think for this project, we'll see how it goes. But we'll probably just end up doing one coat, maybe a little extra here and there just to keep the pretty uh, almond color throughout but you just essentially just take your square brush paint your entire surface of the red I'm painting the very edges of the book just for consistency that you see in the book stack um, you don't need to go through and paint the bottom edges of the books you'll just paint the top and the edges um, and then sometimes with the material though you'll notice that really absorbs this paint. So you may get a little bit of the color showing through. 
I'm okay with that. I actually really like it in this piece. And I really like how the embossing in the um, book itself is showing through the paint. Um, it gives it a little bit more character, I feel. And you're not losing all that character of the uh, antique book. And so we're just going to continue painting. We're going to paint this entire front of this one. And um, this is going to be the one on the bottom of our stack. So we're going to paint all sides of it. We're going to paint our binding here next. Um, and then we're going to paint the bottom also because we want it to look nice and finished on the bottom. So as we get over to the binding, you'll notice the areas that were torn. I'm just going to paint right up to those areas just to try to get that red color to be um, a little bit more cohesive. And get up there, get all that little red material. And we're going to paint that with our square brush. And you just kind of dab it in the corners. And it'll look, soak up right to that edge. If you don't get the very edge of it, it's not going to make much of a difference. We're going to do some antiquing on this with some waxes here in a little bit. And all of that will be more cohesive and, and joined together uh, as we work with that. So that's nothing really to worry about right now. So we'll go ahead and continue to paint this binding. Get all the little edges and the curls and the swirls and... And uh, once again, that's what I really like about the character of these older books is you can leave these little edges that are frayed and torn and it just looks really neat. A little bit more time worn. So I'm just getting all the little edges and we're going to flip it over and do the back side. Now, when we do the back side, you might be able to see here um, when I get a little bit closer in a moment, but the paint doesn't always absorb really well in all of the areas uh, where the material is because material, as you know, material is woven. And so sometimes you really have to kind of scrub and get in there to get inside all those little nooks and crannies and all the little pieces. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm really scrubbing it, trying to get inside all that weave. And so, and adding a, just a little bit more color to the front of this so that we can see the pretty almond color. So almost a second coat, but just kind of a sporadic, just kind of a spotty second coat. Not nothing, nothing solid and nothing super thick. Just real nice, light, thin coats. Okay. A little bit more on the binder here. On the binding. I'm going to flip this over so we can do the back. And you can see that embossing that I talked about a minute ago. Isn't that cool? I mean, you can just really see it standing out. I just love that. Keeps the character of the book. So we're going to move it to where we can get this back side. We're going to paint it completely. And then we're going to move on to our other red book, which we're going to paint um, all sides of it also. Um, I'm just painting the two red books and not painting the blue one, and you'll see why here in a moment. I really like the color and the integrity of the blue book, um, so I'm going to keep that as is, but we're going to do something here in a moment just to protect it, um, and uh, besides what the paint would do to these red books, uh, we're going to protect the blue book also. So here's the back cover of our book. We're going to finish that up, and then we are going to... Head to our next little book, paint that, and then you'll join me for the blue. So as we're waiting for the almond days to dry on the books, we're going to move on to the blue book, which, as we said before, as you remember, it's going to remain the same color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to protect it. I really like the binding of this. Um, so we're going to use some wax. I'm going to put some wax on it and see if we can protect it. We're going to use a light antiquing wax and a dark antiquing wax. Um, and this will just give it a little bit of protection from the elements and just keep it in good shape like the other books that we're going to put in the stack. So I'm going to take a couple of paper towels. I'm just going to fold these into squares. And this is what I'll use to wipe off excess or excess, sorry, of the, um, the wax. So I have some light wax on my brush, light antiquing wax. I'm really grinding it and getting it into the brush and I'm wiping off any excess that does not need to be on the brush. So you'll just do lovely, smooth, light strokes to the book itself. 
you'll want to go back and forth and in a diagonal crisscross crisscross pattern. This will allow you to get good coverage. Um, and you'll see here in a moment when we uh, look at it a little bit closer that, um, and that's the light antique wax, when you get a little bit closer, it's going to have just a little bit of a shine to it or a little sheen, which is kind of neat. Um, and you can tell too that the back of the book has been significantly damaged with some um, fading because when you add this wax to it, look how much darker it gets. So you get a little bit of a sheen and it makes the colors pop in a little bit darker back to where they started their journey. We're going to add just a little bit more to the binding. We're going to add some to the front just to make sure it's completely covered. And you can look in the light and if you notice that there's not an area that has just a tiny bit of sheen to it, you'll notice that maybe that's an area that you didn't have wax on and you can feel it with your hands and you should be able to feel the consistency of the wax and that if it's covered. I'm also going to do the edges of the book um, to make sure that those are protected well also. And so we're going to just finish that up and we're going to feel it. When you feel the wax as it dries, it'll be a bit tacky and it will dry and it won't be as tacky. So once that tackiness goes away and it doesn't take very long, we're actually going to add a little bit of dark antiquing wax. So with a chip brush again, we're going to add the dark wax to the brush and we're going to offload it onto this piece of paper and remove a lot of that wax. So dark antiquing wax is going to be more of an embellishment. Okay, so the dark wax, you want to use it sparingly. Dark wax will not dry if you use too much. So you want to just add it to the edges, just add it to the little areas where your hand would normally touch. So you're essentially making this look a little bit more time worn. You want it to be, you know, where your hands will touch, where maybe, you know, someone grabbed the book with a dirty hand and um, you notice that it has just a little bit more um, discoloration to that area. That's, that's what you want to use the dark antiquing wax for. And so I'm just going to add it to several little areas here. And it's going to be hard to see on this dark book, but once we um, get to our lighter books that we painted, you'll be able to see it a lot more um, in depth. So once again, just offload a lot of that wax, and then we're going to just lightly get the edges, kiss the edges there, just to make sure you get a little bit... You can see how it's got just a little haze around the edges where it looks a little bit more antiqued. If you wanted more antiquing to the books and you wanted them to look a little bit darker and older, you could use a gel stain in the area and just wipe it back in um, the areas that you want some darkness. Um, but I just like the subtlety of the wax better. And so now we're going to do that to our white books. I'm going to hold this white book a little bit closer, the Ecru book, a little closer. You can see that on the material, the paint has caused some little fissuring and cracks. I really like that. I think it gives it character. So we're just going to leave it like it is so that it gets that time-worn feel. So a couple things we're going to do to this book. We're going to actually add a stencil to it with some color. We're going to add some embellishment. And then we're going to use light and dark wax like we did with the blue. So we're just going to take this book and we're going to make it look really pretty and add some embellishment. So next we're going to look at some stencils. So the stencil that we are going to use is called the Shagreen S-H-A-G-R-E-E-N stencil. And look at it. Isn't that beautiful? Super pretty. It looks really pretty on furniture um, and projects itself. And here it is written, if you can see it, S-H-A-G-R-E-E-N. You can get this at amyhowardathome.com. And so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to cut a piece of this out because I find it's easier to work with a smaller piece of the stencil. We're going to cut it out and we're going to use it on the spine with some color. So as you can see here, it's got some mesh in it but it's got a line on the side. You want to make sure that line is not in the middle of your project because it'll have a void there. So you want to make sure it's nicely aligned. We're going to use this Will I Swanee. It's a beautiful chocolate brown gel art ink color, gel art ink. Um, so pretty. Uh, we're going to put it on our scraper here. We're going to use probably about a size of a pea to start with. And then once you apply it to the scraper, 
you can actually take and just drag it across the book and we're going to drag it across that stencil and really kind of just push it down into it. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us the areas where the mesh is. It's going to give us the color that we're looking for. So the uh, mesh stencil is adhesive. So it's going to stick to the underlying layers, which is beautiful because that'll prevent any um, sticky, or I'm sorry, any bleeding or any uh, of the paint from getting leaching out underneath the stencil. It's also going to hold the stencil in place uh, so that you can um, have this beautiful design. So once I get it fully covered here, we're going to continue with that beautiful chocolate brown color. And we're going to cover it, and then I'm going to peel this away, and you'll get to see the beautiful pattern here. So as you see here, we're just going to peel that adhesive up. Oh, look at that pattern. Isn't that gorgeous? So it's a beautiful kind of pebbly pattern. So now this stencil, you can wash these. So you can wash this with a little bit of warm water and you can reuse it and you can reuse it many, many times. So what I did next is I went ahead and cut a larger piece uh, to use for the back of the book. Um, this book is going to be on the bottom of the book. So I wanted to make sure that it was finished completely and that you were able to see a pretty area on the bottom if you happen to pick up the book stack and see the bottom. We want it to all look complete and beautiful. So we're going to use the Ice Wani again to this area with the scraper. And we're going to apply just a little bit more because it is a larger area. And you'll continue to scrape that through the stencil along the areas of the open mesh stencil. You'll notice here that I don't get all the corners. I'm leaving a few little areas open. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to have that rustic, time-worn feel. And I don't want it to be perfect. I don't want it to be 100% uh, just the pattern. So what I would also recommend doing is if you didn't find that that was rustic enough for you, you could actually take a little piece of sandpaper and just lightly sand. And that would make it look a little bit more worn. Or maybe use some um, uh, gel stain. Gel stain would make it look a little bit darker. So you could do that on the edges. It would be very, very pretty. So we're just going to continue here using our Gel Art ink. Gel Art ink is fantastic. You can use it on many things. You can use it on material, paper, any of your furniture or crafting projects. It's super versatile and you don't have to use a lot. As you can see from the amount that I've applied to this, you don't have to use a lot on your projects. So after we get this done, we're going to peel this off. And then I'm actually going to continue that same process on the small book that goes on the top. Um, and I painted it the same color base with the uh, One Step Almond Days. And then we're going to add the stencil also. Now we're going to let this dry. And we're going to move on to our next step. So as you can see here, it's a really, really pretty pattern. We're doing it on the spine and on the back. And the top will stay clear because we'll have other books stacked on top of it. Okay, guys. So here... It's going to be a fun part. We're going to add some embellishment to this. We're going to use a gold metallic gel art ink. So it's metallic gold. We're just going to embellish this a little bit. So I'm going to squirt a little bit of this out on my paper plate. And then I'm going to take this really super thin, fine brush. It's almost like an eyelash brush. And you're going to, we're going to take and we're going to fill little areas of the stencil in. And you can see how thin this brush is. If I can get it in the camera here. Oh, there it is. So now you can see that, and I'm just going to take it and lightly outline a few areas with that gold. So here and there, a little bit of gold, kind of mimicking what you would see on an old book binding. You would see some gold or silver or bronze on the binding, but it may not be in every area. So I'm just going to skip around a little bit, and we're going to add some to this. So a little bit here and there not together just kind of sporadically through and i'm going to show you what it looks like here in a moment and it's not super shiny but it gives off just enough shine that you can see the gold it's really pretty so see that gold doesn't that look really pretty and you can just add a little bit here and there you could also add gold leafing if you wanted to this area um, but i find with this book stack that this uh process with the the gel art metallic works great so I'm actually 
once we're finished with the binding here, I'm actually going to paint the top of the book. Uh, we're going to do the same thing that we did on the side. I'm just kind of getting a little areas here and there that might show up. Add a little interest. So now we're going to do the back of the book. And doesn't that look pretty? Ooh, okay. So here's the back, and we're going to add just a little in certain areas. I think we're going to use like six or eight different little areas. So we're just going to sporadically place these throughout so that you can see a little bit of the gold. And this is a little bright right now, but once you add your uh, light and dark wax, it will tone it down a little bit, but it will still have a little bit of that shimmer and it'll be really pretty. It'll give us kind of that timeless feeling to it. Most books back in the day when they had the material on them, they did do a gold leafing or uh, silver leafing in the binding um, and on the spines. There's, if you look at a lot of older books, you'll notice there's some leafing on there. And it's really pretty, really, really pretty. So I thought we'd kind of do an ode to that by adding a little bit of this gel art ink. And you can see here where I've added just pieces of it here. So pretty. So now, after that is dried, I'm going to add some wax like we did to the blue book. So we're going to use our light antiquing wax, which I just showed you. I'm going to fold this paper over so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to offload excess wax from my brush from the light wax. And I'm going to paint this on the book with just real light, 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 just barely touching the surface. Uh, with my chip brush. You want it to be super light. You don't want it to be so thick uh, that you can feel it um, kind of a slime or kind of a thickness to it. You don't want it to be wet. You want it to be tacky. Okay, you want it to have a little tack to it, but you don't want it to be super wet. So you're just going to lightly touch this. And you can see what happens is you can see a little bit of a sheen from the wax on this book and I'm going to go a couple different directions and make sure I get good coverage. That sheen you can look, you can see if there's areas that aren't covered or you could just use your finger and you'll notice a lot of times you'll see me feeling it because you can feel the wax on the surface. And you want it to be a very thin layer because if it's very thick then it won't dry. So we're just going to make sure this is well covered and you can see me feeling it to feel for the wax on there. Okay, and we're going to put that around the bindings. We're going to put that everywhere on this book. And then we're going to move to our dark wax. So the dark wax is more of another embellishment that we're going to add. So the dark antiquing wax is going to give it kind of that worn look. It's going to give it a little bit of um, grunge. So we're just going to offload the excess dark wax here. And then we're going to go around the edges. So the edges of the book are where you're going to put the dark wax. And you want to use it very sparingly. If you use too much dark wax, it will not dry. Okay. So I'm going right around the edges. As you can see, see how it darkened it up a little bit? Made it look a little bit older, a little bit more used. Not so new like we just painted it. So I'm going to go along any of the areas that could possibly have um, had hands touch it. Um, just kind of worn areas. So I'm going to get all the corners, all the edges, and then I'm going to come back here in the middle. You can see it right here. And I'm going to put a little bit there because that's like where my thumb is going to touch whenever I grab a book. So make it look just a little bit worn. So you can see it here. You can see some of that dark wax there. It looks a little bit used. So we're going to make sure the binding is really good on the spine. And then we're going to come here to the back. And this is where you'll really see the dark wax. And if you can see, I haven't used a lot of wax on my brush, but you can still see it showing up especially with this lighter color. So I'm just going to go around all the edges. You can see how the edges are getting nice and coated. And you're getting a nice color there. And we're going to add it right in the middle, make it a little grungy. You can see it's really defined where the edges of that embossing are from our paint. 
and you can see the little bit of darkness around it. So now what we're going to add is we're going to add Dust of Ages. Dust of Ages is amazing. So it's a powder that you can use on your projects after wax that allows the powder to get into the cracks and crevices and into our cracks that we caused with the paint. You just put a little bit on your brush and then you're going to dust it over the top of whatever you're painting with wax or painting and sealing with wax. It is very, very messy, a little dusty. So you probably want to do this outside. Typically I do do this outside, but I'm just going to do this here today. We're going to add our dust of ages onto all the surfaces. Once we get this applied, then we're going to take a lint free rag and we're going to buff this and make it just look beautiful. So we're adding our dust of ages. You can see that it's kind of a dusty look to it. It's kind of made it a little bit dull. So now where the magic happens, we're going to take this lint free rag after I dust myself off and we're just going to lightly buff the surface. So when we do that, look, that powder kind of went into the cracks, into the crevices, and it caused a nice sheen on the book. So kind of like the dark wax, we want to go to the edges of the book. Anywhere that your hand will touch will be more shiny. So we're going to really get the spine. We're going to get around the edges. We want that to just shine up a little bit. Okay. It's not going to take off your dark wax, and it's just going to make it look a little bit more refined and polished, refined and polished. And you could see that sheen on there. So here's our book stack. We're going to add some velveteen ribbon to it. This velveteen ribbon was found at a big box store. Um, it's very easy to work with, very pretty. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a bow and we're going to tie a bow just like you tie your shoe. Okay. Simple, simple, simple. Tie a bow like you tie your shoe. And then as we go here, you'll see that we can just manipulate this ribbon and make it look nicer. So you always want to make sure that your velvet shows to the outside because it looks incomplete if it doesn't. So what you can do is you can actually just take it and you can manipulate it to where all the, the velvet side is out. So as we get this tied here and brought around, then I can take the loop and the, the ends of it and I can twist them. So here on this other side, what you'll see is I will actually take and I'm going to twist this ribbon inside out so that you can see the pretty area. So there you go. Beautiful ribbon tied like a shoelace. Anybody could do that. So now we're going to add some embellishment. We're going to add some flowers. Okay. So this is some beautiful little spray that I got from another big box store. I'm going to take my wire cutters. Most um, faux flowers are going to have wire in them and they're easy to manip manipulate because of that wire. But I want to cut this off so that you don't see that end and you don't see that it looks very unnatural. I like how this looks like a little wildflower bouquet that you'd pick from your yard. So I hope you guys enjoy this and got some good tips and tricks. Um, so here's our finished little book stack. We got our cute little bow and our little foliage. Easy peasy. Anybody can do this. And if you can do this, you can paint a piece of furniture. So don't let it intimidate you. You've got this. Thanks for joining me and I hope you had a great time. We'll talk to you soon.